blessing it is to be in the Lord's house again another day. Amen. You pray that day that God's message will be an uplift. Amen. To each and every one of us were down a little bit this morning. Amen. Nevertheless, when God said they two or three gathered together in His name, Amen. He'll be in the midst. Amen. Amen. So we're glad, thank God, for the presence of, of the Lord. Amen. Glad, thank God, for what He's done. Amen. For what He's doing. Amen. <coughs> what He's going to do one of these Amen. days after a while. Amen. We've been over there sitting at the house reading and studying. Amen. They tried to get on something else and God wouldn't let me. Amen. So, but. Uh, Today, I want you to listen real close, amen, to uh, the reading of God's Word, amen, listen real close to, to the message, amen, and let it, let it touch your hearts and touch your lives this morning. Well, I'll tell you first, every time that we're living in, amen, the world we need to be close to God, it's the day and hour that we're amen. living in, amen. I've never seen the world in such a shape. Amen, that it's him today. Amen. Well, I'm telling you what, God said as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Hey, we're right there knocking on the door. Amen. Amen. So you pray. Amen. And uh, that God will have his way. Amen. And if I, if I had a thought to lay upon this this morning, uh, I'd like to use a thought on a, on a, on a thought on encouragement from the deathbed. Amen. Encouragement from the deathbed. Amen. You might say, preacher, where in the world are you going? Amen. If you go over into the book of uh, 2 Timothy, amen, in chapter number 2, amen, and uh, down, starting down in verse number 1, amen, he says, Now therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou the faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Therefore, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that war entangle himself with the affairs of life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Amen. Now if we go over in uh, to the next uh, uh, chapter number 4, I believe it is. Amen. If we go over in chapter number 4, amen, down in verse number 1. Amen. I want you to listen to what Paul is telling Timothy. He said, I charge thou therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing, and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come. Now I want you to pay real close attention right here. He said, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, shall heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fable. But watch thou in all things and endure afflictions to do the work of evangelists. Make full proof of thy ministry. And then Paul wrote, For I am now ready to be offered at the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith. And henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me of that day, and shall not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Let us pray. Father, dear Lord, it's again God that we come to you. We thank the hearts, thanking you, Lord, for this day. Thanking you, God, for another opportunity, Lord, to be in your house. And Lord, to be able to worship thee today, God. Father, we pray today, Lord, that thou would undertake, and God, that thou would supply 
Lord, the very needs of the hour, Lord, that we have here today. God, we pray, Lord, if we've done or said anything, Lord, it would hinder this in any way. Lord, that you'd forgive us of it and pull us up. God, close to the cross and make preaching easy. Father, undertake and Lord, supply. God, the very needs of the hour. And Lord, whatever's accomplished, dear Lord, will not fail, God, to bow our head. And Lord, to give you the praise and the honor and the glory, Father, for we ask it all. In Jesus' holy and precious name we do pray. And amen and amen. You know, as we uh, look at these pieces of scriptures and we begin to read and begin to study God's Word, a lot of people uh, come to the conclusion that this might have been one of the last letters that Paul had wrote. Amen. And he wanted to write it, amen, to be an encouragement uh, to Timothy, amen, that was a going into the ministry, amen. But I find in these scriptures today, amen, that it, it, it doesn't only need to be an encouragement to those that preach the gospel, amen, but in order to be an encouragement to each and every one of us today, Amen. As we're uh, trying to live our life that is pleasing unto the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We find here as Paul is giving out a letter of warning. Amen. And no doubt. Amen. This thing that since these times that, amen, the world has got worse and worse as time has went on. And I think today that America is about as far away from God as what it's ever been. Amen. I believe today there are less praying that goes on in America today than what they've ever been. Amen. I believe today you can even break it down to where there's less a church attendance. Amen. And today than what they've ever been. Amen. In our society. Amen. Used to be. Amen. Years and years ago people would clean unto what thus saith the Lord. And they cling on uh, the promises that come from God. And they build their home, they may hold the trust that they have in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we see uh, now through the years that this has changed. They may, and it's fell by the wayside. And Paul was a try to encourage Timothy. Amen. He said there are going to be times, amen, that you just feel like giving up. Amen. There will be times you feel like quitting, but you got to remember what is ahead of you. Amen. And what is ahead of you is far greater than that that is behind you. Amen. Boy, I tell you what, I got more to look forward to today than I ever had in Amen. my life. Amen. Amen. So Paul was writing a letter of warning. Amen. And it wasn't only a letter of warning, but it was a letter of encouragement. Amen. Boy, I tell you how we need to be encouraged. Amen. In this day and time that we live in. There's some things that is going to happen. Amen. During uh, uh, the time just before the coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There are going to be some things that happen in the church world. Amen. Just before uh, the appearing of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You might say, Preacher, Amen. How do you get that? Hey, it's in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Tonight. And Paul is a covering a lot of these things. Amen. I believe number one. Amen. Before of the coming of the Lord. Amen. We'll see the wickedness of the world. Amen. This scene had come abroad. Amen. And boy, look at our world today. Amen. We have never lived in such a wicked generation. Amen. Boy, I tell you, it's got to the point you're not even safe in your own home with the doors locked. Amen. They say, brother, we live in a society where people have no regards for human life. Amen. They said people just as soon shoot you as look at you. Amen. Tonight, and Paul said, in the last days, that the weakness of man would be able to abound. Amen. And boy, what did he say? As it was in the days of Noah, I so shall huh? in the coming of the Lord. Amen. And in the days of Noah, men's heart were continually 
wicked. Amen. Amen. If you ever lived in such a generation, amen, it's what we live in today. Amen. It's a generation that children don't have no respect for their parents. <laughs> Amen. This evening, it's a, yeah, we're living in a generation to where people don't have no respect for one another. They don't love one another. Amen. It's all about that. Amen. And nothing else. Listen today. We're right there. Amen. We're right there knocking upon the door. And Paul said that in the last days, that wickedness was going to abound. It will increase over time. Amen. And we're living in that era right now. Amen. This evening, now listen, and today, brother, I'm telling you, it's a sad thing. Amen. Whenever you can't trust anybody. Amen. Listen, it used to be years ago, you'd see somebody hitchhiking along the side of the road. Wouldn't bother you, bitch. Stop and pick them up. Amen. Give them a ride. But today, unless you know them, amen, and you know them real good, you just let them keep on the walking. Amen. And because you don't know what they got in mind, and you don't know what they're carrying, we live in a generation where the weakness of people are abounding more and more every day in this old world. Amen. And then when we hear a little old country church sits along beside the road, amen, this seem to try to do that and is right in the sight of God. Amen. Might I tell you today, you need to expect, amen, this scene of the church to be over flooded. Amen. Boy, you need to expect, hey, to be in the hundreds, amen, of people uh, coming and receiving the Lord as their Lord and Savior. Amen. I believe that times are about to come to an end. Amen. Because the Bible said in the last day hey, that the weakness more than anything else was going to about. Oh no, I preached for a hundred and 20 years, and it was him and his family that went into the ark. Amen. Amen. Him and his family. All the rest of them drowned and amen in the flood. And they come, listen today, when Jesus comes to claim his own, they're going to be more left behind than they are going. Amen. They're going to be more left. Thank God. I wonder why. He's going on more than. I mean, he's a shouting. Amen. In the presence of an almighty God. And Paul is trying to tell Timothy here, regardless of how how bad that it get, regardless of how low down you get. Amen. Don't ever give up. Amen. And because your reward is in the one. And he's a coming back one day after a while. Amen. And what we need to do today is just to keep pressing on after the name of the Lord and Savior of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And it's hard. It's hard sometimes. Sometimes you get discouraged. Amen. Sometimes it's you, you you think of people that would never let you down. Amen. That let you down. Amen. There, there's people that thank God more you think in your heart and in your life. He ain't never going to quit. Amen. That's quit. Amen. Amen. But brother, I'm telling you tonight, I got too much in stay. Amen. To quit. Amen. I got my soul. Amen. That is resting in my hand of an eternal God. I don't want to go to hell. Amen. And Jesus said you don't have to. I just keep your faith and your trust in me and keep praying. It all. Amen. Amen. He said wickedness was going to abound. Amen. Number two, before the coming of the Lord, he said false teachers will arise. Amen. You tell me today. Amen. You tell me today that the world ain't full of false teachers. Amen. You tell me today that preachers, amen, this evening, there we got many of them in this land today and is a giving out false doctrine. Amen. And they're letting people build on false hopes. Amen. And on false dreams. Amen. When we get away from the Word of God. Amen. This evening and we build on our own ideals. Amen. Then we're about ready to fall right flat on our face. Amen. We need to take thus what saith the Lord and to run with it. Amen. Tonight, and the, he told Timothy uh, he said boy preach uh, the Word of God and preach the doctrine of Almighty God. Amen. We got false teachers on every corner. We got people that is leading people astray. Amen. This evening we got people that is a feeding people a lie. 
Amen. And they're believing every word of it. And they're swallowing it. Hook, line, and sinker. Amen. They say that whenever man goes to try to tell you there's another way in except the door. He don't know what he's a talking about. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And if any man goes to the Father, he's going to come by me. Amen. And through the blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen today. We got doctors all around us today and try to build on everything except the Lord and Savior of Jesus Christ. Our churches over time has come a place of entertainment. Amen. Amen. What people are looking for, they're looking forward to being entertained. Amen. They don't want to be preached at. Amen. This same I had a lady tell me the other day, she said, I don't like it. When a preacher hollers at me, I said, Praise God, somebody ought to. Amen. Amen. So you realize where you was going to. Amen. Amen. And turn around and get on the right track. Somebody needs to lay down the law. Amen. And Jesus is the only way that we can be saved. Amen. Tonight. And if you can't get excited about the Word of God, you need to get excited about anything. Amen. Because He is the only thing and He's going to last. Amen. Paul was a telling Timothy. He said in the last days there are going to be more false teachers Amen. than around. Every church that Paul planted, every church that Paul pastored, amen, you know what tried to get in the door? False doctrine. Amen, you know what tried to come in and take over? False doctrine. Amen. This evening there was all, all the time somebody trying to teach something. Amen. That wasn't of God's Word. Amen. And boy, anything that ain't of His Word, it's false doctrine. Amen. And Paul had trouble with the, with the legalisms. Amen. He had come in and they had tried to teach about the law. Amen. That you got to do this and you got to do that. And you got to do this in order to live right. You got to do this in order to live right. You got to do this to be on your way to hell. Hey man, it is about letting Jesus come into our heart and come into our life and He'll lead us and guide us in the ways that He wants us to go. It ain't about the little things. Hey man, boy, I tell you, I had a preacher one time. He said, I believe I got the Word of God figured out. I could hardly wait <laughs> to hear that answer. He told me, he said, I believe we got the Word of God figured out. I said, boy, this is going to be a good. He said, I read the Word of God, and he said, I see a lot of do's, and I see a lot of don'ts. And he said, so I figured it like this. If I don't do the don'ts and I do do the do's, I should be all right. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you know, you know, that makes sense, don't no? yeah. Amen. If the Lord tells us to do something and we do it, amen, and then God tells us not to do something and we don't do it, we ought to be in pretty good shape. Amen. But see, in our world that we live in today, there's wickedness, amen, and it's abounded everywhere. There's false teachers that have arose. Amen. This evening, to teach your people, you give me 10, God will give you 20. Amen. You plant 100 seed, amen, God will give you 150 in return. If you want to be healed. Amen. Send in to my ministry. I'll send you a prayer cloth. Amen. Go to bed and lay the prayer cloth on your head uh, and your headache will be gone. Amen. That's a bunch of bull. Amen. Listen tonight, brother. I tell you, we need uh, to stand firm in the Word of God. Let God's Word uh, be the authority. And the Bible said in the last day that false teachers will arise. They arose everywhere. False teachers is arise everywhere. Number three, in the last days, men's hearts will be hard. Have you ever lived in a generation of words so hard to reach somebody for the Lord? We live in a day today where it's hard to get people to believe and accept the Lord as their Savior. Amen. You won't know why? Because their heart has got so hard. Amen. Their hearts has got so hard. And a lot of it, the reason why their hearts has got so hard is what their eyes have seen. 
Amen. Their eyes have seen people that claim to be children of God. Amen. Doing things that children of God ought not to do. Amen. And they got in their heart and in their mind, if they're saved, I'm just as saved as they are. Amen. This evening, and boy, I'm telling you what, listen today, but the Bible said in the last days that men's heart, amen, would be hardened. Amen. Hardened to what? Hardened to the gospel of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You got people today, amen, that'll tell you, preacher, I don't want to hear anything you got to say. I don't want to hear anything about this man called Jesus. Amen. We went several years ago and seen a man in the hospital. He was laying there on his death man and we walked in and we tried to tell him about the Lord and he looked up off of the death man and he said preacher I don't want to hear a thing you got to say you might as well carry that on to somebody else amen that cares and two days later he was dead amen his heart had got hardened unto the gospel of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ amen. used to be able you preach a message on the cross Amen. And preach about the suffering that Jesus went through. Amen. And preach about all the pain that He went through. And you could see people everywhere. Amen. Taking out handkerchiefs. Amen. And wiping the tears out of their eyes when they thought about what God went through. Amen. To save an old sinner as such as I. Amen. They say, and hey, brother, you preach it now. People look at you like you lost your ever loving mind. Amen. They look at you like they could care less. Amen. They look at you and say, well, preacher, it's a story that I've heard all of my life. Hey Amen. Peter said over there in the book of Second Peter, he said, in the last days, scoffers would come and say, where is the promise of his coming? I've heard about it all my life, and he ain't showed up yet. Why should I believe? And he's on the verge of coming back because of everything that is going on in our society. Amen. It's a pointing towards the coming of the Lord. People's hearts is hard. You tell people whenever they fall away from God, you need to be back in church and they'll look at you with a smile on their face. I know. I know. I know I need to be in church. I'll, I'll see you Sunday. Amen. Sunday comes and Sunday goes. Amen. And they never show up. Amen. And boy, you talk to them the following way. Say, I thought you was coming to church on Sunday. Where was you at? Well, they was something else come up. Amen. I just couldn't make it. Amen. Maybe in a couple of weeks. Amen. Their hearts is being hardened. Amen. Boy, I'm telling you, the devil has blinded their eyes. Let's say, might see. Amen. Afar off. Amen. Tonight, do you know that the people in Noah's days, amen, whenever Noah was a preacher of the gospel, amen, the reason why that they didn't believe is because because their eyes was a blinded. Amen. They couldn't see a far off. Amen. And I, they never even really realized, amen, that that flood was a coming, that it was going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. Amen. They thought it was a myth. They said, well, it ain't never rained before. Amen. The water always come up out of the ground. But Noah kept telling them. He said, there's a flood a coming. Amen. There's a coming a day. Amen. It is going to rain. Amen. And they still lived in their sins. They didn't want anything to know and to hear about what Noah had to say because their hearts were hardened. Amen. Amen. You know what love in this old world will do? It'll harden your heart to where you can't love Jesus the way you need to. Amen. You can't love them both. You can't love God and the devil at the same time. Amen. You can't love the things of God and love the things of the world at the same time. Amen. You can't walk straddle of the fence. Amen. How, how many of you have ever tried to walk a split rail fence? Amen. One foot on this side, one foot on this side. Hey Amen. You make one wrong move, something's going to get hurt. Hey Amen. You let them feet slide out from in under you, you'll be singing high tenor for the next three months. <laughs> Listen, that's what happens to us whenever we get to where we're loving the world and trying to love God at the same time. Hey Amen. There's something going to happen in our life that we're going to have to choose. 
Amen. On whom we're going to serve. The Bible said to choose you this day whom you shall serve. Amen. Listen, boy, what the devil has has taken the world and he's hardened our hearts. Amen. Towards God. You've got to admit people don't serve God the way they did back in the 50s. People don't serve God the way they used to back in the early 60s. They just don't know it. They've drifted. Amen. Our churches down through the time has drifted. Amen. And that's what Paul is writing to Timothy here. He said there's coming a time that they'll not endure sound doctrine. I've had people right here that has come and visited this church. And when the preaching got a little bit too loud, you know what they done? They got up, walked out the door, shut the door, got in their vehicle, and went down the road. I've had people that call me on the telephone after a church service and say, Preacher, you don't ever have to worry about me coming back. I ain't never coming back up here. Hey Amen. They ain't no need to screaming and a holler and they get the word of God out. Brother, I tell you what, it ain't the screaming and the hollering that bothered. It was the word of God that bothered them and convicted them of their life. And they said, We ain't coming back. See, the devil has heart in our hearts. Listen, we might hear. And listen, our eyes might be open and we might see the glories of God. Amen. And accept that that God has given to us. Paul said, Timothy, there's coming a day to where it's going to be harder then than it is now. He said, but what you got to do, you got to be strong in the grace of God and you just got to keep on going on. Listen today, I pastor churches. Uh, I've been preaching for 40 some years. Amen. I've been cussed out, bawled out, called everything but a white man. Amen. Sat down in a in the pastor's chambers one day. Amen. This evening was taken through the ringers with three deacons. Amen. Told I wasn't no good for anything. Amen. They didn't like me, didn't like to hear my preaching. They just wished that I I'd just pack up and just leave town. Listen, this evening. God didn't call me to leave. Amen. He called me to stay. Amen. Listen tonight. Brother, I'm telling you tonight. But the world has hardened people's hearts. Now that wasn't here that that happened, but that was the one church not too awful long ago. And they said, why don't you just pack up and leave? I said, well, I can't. They said, well, why can't you? We voted you in. And we're the one that accepted you as pastor. I said, yeah, but you ain't the one to call me. God called me. Amen. <clears throat> so he gets done, y'all might as well learn to live with me. Amen. Because I ain't going anywhere. And they said, well, we're going to quit paying you. I said, good. I'll preach for free. That'll make it even better. <laughs> Listen tonight. But we live in a society to where people's hearts are hard. Amen. They're hard. They'll believe everything except the truth. Amen. Timothy said it'll come a day. Paul said it'll come a day that they'll not endure sound doctrine. We're at that day. We're at that point in life to where people don't want the true doctrine of God. They want to be entertained. You get it? Amen. To where you got the loud music. <coughs> You got the loud music, the flashing lights, and you get it to where they come out and they dance around with the little flags. Mm -hmm. Amen. And they call that their praise and their worship team. You can feel a building. But when it comes right down to having the doctrine of God, Amen. Because if you got the doctrine of God, I don't believe you're going to be carried on like that. Amen. If you got the doctrine of God, they're not going to be people coming out in men's skirts and dancing around carrying a flag and praising and worshiping God. Listen today. It's about having the doctrine of God in our life. 
God is very strict. He said, let my house be decent and in order. Amen. Amen. Let my house be decent and in order. Yeah. Amen. That I might, my glory might fill the house. Amen. Listen today. We're living in a time. We're right at the end. Amen. And number four, the faithful will be few. Amen. In the last days, the faithful <coughs> will be few. You remember about Noah? 120 years was him and his family that entered into the ark. You remember the city of Sodom and Gomorrah? Lot coming up out of the city. Amen. Boy, I'm telling you what. The Bible says in the last days, the faithful are going to be few. Amen. They're going to be far and few in between. Amen. They say, like I said at the beginning, uh, Paul's trying to encourage Timothy. He said, Timothy, there's going to be times that you preach and that you preach and that you preach, and you're going to be in more trouble than you are rejoicing. He said, there are going to be times that you preach and preach and lay down the gospel, and there are going to be more people against you than who's for you. But he said, what you got to do, you just got to keep on. You just got to keep on preaching. You just got to keep on preaching, keep on declaring the Word of God. Because he said, the faithful would be few. What did he say in Matthew? He said, wide and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many thereat beyond. But straight and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life, and few there be that find it. Amen. Boy, I'm telling you, I'd rather be of the few Amen. than I would be of the many. But this Paul, Paul's letter might have been, I'm not saying that it was, but it could have been coming off of his deathbed as an encouragement to Timothy. Oh, how we need to be encouraged today. Amen. How we need to be lifted up today. Amen. Things ain't going to always be as they are. Amen. Because there's a better day a coming. There's a brighter day a coming. Amen. For them few. Amen. That hang in there and believe on God and trust in God. There's a brighter day a coming. Amen. Because Jesus said one of these days, I'm going to come and I'm going to take them out of all this mess. And I'm going to take them home to be with me. We're living in the last hours. Jesus could come any day and he wouldn't owe anybody an apology. We're living in the last, last hours of the day. I was talking to somebody and I was telling somebody, I said, if people could even get a glimpse of how close it was to the coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I said, that little old church that sits along the side of the road out there leaving, we wouldn't even be able to hold everybody in the morning. Amen. Because everybody would be wanting to get in and make it right. Everybody would be wanting to get saved. Amen, before he comes back. And the reason that people carry on the way that they do is because they don't really believe he's coming. They don't really believe he's coming. They really don't think that it can happen any day. Amen, listen, that's what the devil does. He's the best at that. Lying and postponing what we need to do. What we need to do. My dad one time, years ago, I had this little old car. Boy, I think it'd fly. Dad kept telling me, he said, you need to put tires on that thing. Well, in my head, I know that I needed tires. But in my wallet, he kept telling me, no, they'd be all right for a while. <laughs> hey, Amen. So I said, well, I'll get something a little bit later. And I'll get something a little bit later. And I got that thing out on the wet road. I went around a turn one morning. When I went around that turn, that right front tire blew out. Mm -hmm. Amen. It run me over the hill almost in the creek. I realized then more than ever that I needed tires on that car. 
Amen. And see, people are saying, you can ask people, do you believe the Lord is coming back? Oh, yeah, yeah. I believe He could come back any time. Where do you go to church at? Well, we don't really go anywhere. But I know He's coming back. If they believed He was coming back, it would be in the house of God. They've been trying to be obedient unto Him. So what a letter that come from Paul. What a letter that come from Him trying to encourage us. Amen. If we don't feel every seed in here, amen, and if we don't feel every pew in here, if we don't see new people every weekend, that is no sign for us to give up. That is no sign for us to quit. Amen. Tonight, what the signs is, is that Jesus is closer to coming today than He was yesterday. Amen. And it's a sign just to keep pressing on that much harder. Amen. To try to win them that are lost for the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said over there in chapter number 3, He said, In the last days, peerless times shall come. Well, you're telling me today we don't live in a day of peerless times. I remember whenever I was growing up, we didn't have all the fancy air conditioners and everything like they got today. Lived in an old house on about four acres of land, had no wood floor on it. We'd go to bed at the night, it'd be so hot in there, you'd have all the windows raised. Mm -hmm. Have the big wooden doors open, have the little old screen doors shut. The screen doors wasn't even latched. And you'd turn out the lights and you'd go to bed and you'd never think about anybody breaking in on them. You get ready to go to town, town was about 30 to 40 minutes away. You'd leave your house unlocked, just the screen door shut and go to town spend a half a day and come back, never dream about anybody taking any of your stuff. Amen, because people cared about one another. They had respect for one another. Amen, somebody's house burnt down, the whole community jumped in and helped them build another house. Amen, to put shelter over their head. We don't live in those days anymore. We don't live in those days anymore. That place where I come from, Amen. Before I come up here, it had then got to the point in certain parts of that city when 11 o'clock service started, they locked the church doors. Mm -hmm. And the people that were sitting on the back seat, they'd have deacons sitting on the back seat of the church. And right underneath their suit jacket, they'd be carrying a 357. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's how bad it got because churches are being broke in right in the middle of service and people robbed of everything they had. Churches broke in and safes pulled plumb out from in under the nest. Amen. And thousands of dollars stole out of the safes. See, that's the kind of day we're living in. That's the kind of days we're living in. And the Bible said that in those days, the coming of the Son of Man is near. He's close to come. He's close to come. He's right on the verge, amen, of stepping out of the clouds of glory and coming back. Are you ready? Are you looking for Him today? Was you looking for Him this morning when you got up? Was you expecting Him to come sometime during the night? Amen. Or well, we might wake up in that beautiful city. Amen. Paul was trying to encourage him. He said, in everything you do, be strong. Be strong. Be strong in the grace. Depend upon God's grace to carry you through. Depend upon God's grace to see you to the end. I hope and pray today that this message has been an uplift. I hope and pray that it's been an encouragement. Amen. And boy, I'm telling you what, how people today need to be encouraged. How they need to be encouraged to live for Jesus. Amen. How their names need to be brought up before God in prayer. That the Lord help us to live 
because we're living in a day and in an hour to where God could come any time. If he would come, are you ready? Are you ready? Let's all stand this morning. Amen. We're just all going to stand. We ain't even going to have no music.